very good. It was uh, yeah, the talk was really enjoyable, and also you have a very good space for conversation and networking afterwards. That was uh, very interesting. Did you yeah. try out Wonder yet? Uh, yes, and then we had 15 people joining at the same time and asking questions. But I mean, it was really really nice. I think it definitely feels almost like a cocktail party. You can kind of go around yeah. in a virtual room. It's really cool. Yes, it's definitely completely new for me. Like it was a new uh, experience. Really interesting. So for all of those out there who don't know you, Jean, can you tell us a little bit about your career, how you got to that um, lead position at Zalando for Facebook marketing and what you've done before? Um, yeah, sure. So I was uh, I worked for five years at Trivago in Germany. It's been roughly eight years that I'm in Germany. And yeah. I, uh, I went from marketing to being a product manager and from being a product manager to being a product manager working on marketing topics at Trivago. So I was mar uh, doing MarTech. And I switched over to Zalando a bit less than three years ago when there was a very big push to um, moving performance marketing into the direction of tech. Yeah. So right now we have a fully, um, we have a full tech structure in our performance marketing department and we have product managers leading teams. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've, I was lucky enough to start in the Facebook team. Now I'm leading the, the development of the Facebook team. We work with engineers, marketing managers, everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, very interesting. Back to your question, how did that happen? It's a lot of work. <laughs> What keeps you excited to do all this uh, work? Like, uh, what is, excites you about online marketing? Um, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, so what we do is extremely tech heavy. So I work with, for instance, what is really interesting about my job right now is I get to build machine learning models with data scientists to predict how much we should invest in our in our campaign. So it's not only just the marketing, it's also the data side and then there's data protection, protection there's the legal aspect to it, there's how it will evolve in the future and then there's, of course, marketing tactics and how do you adapt to your channel? So how do you develop and grow in all of the different placements? What is the strategy everywhere? I mean, there's, it's very rapidly moving. If mm. I had to say one thing is that it changes very quickly. So what was true two years ago is probably not true yeah. two years from now. So we need to build in a very specific environment. And I mean, keeps us on our toes all the time. We're going to talk about the data topic uh, in, in a few minutes. W what I was wondering, you know, in the media bubble, in my world, people keep saying, okay, Facebook is dead. Nobody is on Facebook anymore. And it's actually um, true for, for, for some, for, yeah, the, the, for some trends, like um, people are not reading us there anymore as much as they have been a couple of years ago. So my, I was wondering, how is that um, in e-commerce and specifically for Zalando, how is Facebook, Facebook um, or what role does Facebook play in comparison to other channels? Um, excellent question. So I started at Zalando thinking that no one was on Facebook and then I discovered actually a lot of people and way more than what you believe are on Facebook. Also, we do fashion. So the an econ for fashion, I mean, most of the target audience is mostly uh, women and it starts 25 to 45 maybe. And that's like, the key demographic of Facebook. It's like, I would compare it to earlier days in TV where you had the housewife that was at home and watching TV. And now actually it moved to being on Facebook. So it, the, the audience there is amazing. Like for direct response, really great. And it's still there. It's still very powerful and growing. And the second part is social. So the development of social media. And I thought, okay, people are not going to Facebook anymore, but they're transitioning to the ecosystem of apps of Facebook. So now Instagram is extremely strong growing faster than Facebook. Um, and we've seen, so we've shifted also our strategy from a brand perspective to being very present on Instagram. That's what my customers are requesting now. Uh, and yeah, the so, shift so to for social you, is... Instagram is big, as for Zalando, Instagram is bigger right now than Facebook? On, so on the, on the social aspect, so yeah. we separate performance marketing and then whatever is a okay. brand or social media. Uh, but there's a very big push to going in social media on social networks, of course. And with Corona, what happens is people have even more time than before. So we see all of the networks have a lot more audience, uh, a lot more opportunities to advertise because yeah, people use their phone way more right now. Mm -hmm. And are you also look, looking into new channels? We've had Tarek Müller um, this morning who talked a little bit about TikTok. Is that something that is interesting to Zalando? 
Uh, yeah, definitely. So we're always checking what is going on in the in the market, how customer uh, demand is shifting. I can tell you from a perspective of performance, some of those channels are too early. So if we talk about TikTok, they don't really have the solutions that we're looking for to advertise at scale in Europe. Um, we don't really know how the data exchange is supposed to work with TikTok if we can't even exchange data. But what happens is there was a very big shift from customers going to that platform, a lot of people consuming content there. Uh, so brand is very interesting. So how do you create content that people relate to as your, you know, Zalando as a brand? And how can we make an impact there? So it's not our remit, it's not performance. But what I'd say is those channels get first um, pervaded or, you know, the introduction, the start is um, brand marketing. You've had a talk this morning, um, tech-driven performance marketing, a look at the next frontier. Um, for those who, um, of the audience out there who missed it, can you give us a recap on that? What is, does that next frontier look like? Um, yes, I'll try and be quick. No, no, we have time. <laughs> I mean, but if I want to be exhaustive and not be too long i'd say first of all our department is a tech driven department so it's cross-functional teams with product managers we rely a lot on automation and we do way less marketing work than what you would expect because most of it is automated uh, so that's the first part uh, the second part is the importance of data and how much we actually look in data for every type of decision making we make so When we want to measure things, we look at our own data, we have our own attribution, we run our own models for customer lifetime value, and we have a specific ways to reach or understand the return on investment of each of the campaigns. And that enables better decision making. And the third most important piece for us is measuring incrementality. I'm not sure you know what incrementality is. Measuring incrementality. Step by step, right? right? Um, What, what we do is we want to understand what is the causal impact of marketing. So we want to invest where we can prove that showing an ad made sense and triggered a response. So we will test all of the markets, all of the channels to figure out what is their incrementality and then inform our investment decision. So modulate how much we invest based on how much traction we actually see in a channel. And in the end, what we've built is a system to make better decisions than what you would have if you don't have that information. And hopefully it informs uh, management and leadership and they can trust the way we invest on social or on search, uh, knowing that our euros are hard at work doing what they're supposed to do. I know um, to a lot of the um, audience out there, um, Zalando is uh, actually kind of famous because they um, are famous for betting on AI and marketing. I think two years ago, even there was some bad press because uh, Zalando let go 240 people because they believe in the power of automation. Can you say, like, why Why do you believe in automation? Why is that the way you, you're, you're going? And um, I mean, I think right now, three years later, it's not really that we believe in it, it's that we know for a fact that it has worked like we yeah. have we have the numbers that that show that um streamlining the market streamlining how you make decisions having a better read on incrementality and knowing how much you want to invest made sense to us because when we look back Zalando is growing pretty quickly still at our size and uh, there's a lot of demand in the market now we're lucky enough to be in a in a context, a very hard context right now, but we sit in one of the industries that is actually not hit by it, even the other way around. And we try to capture the demon where it is and satisfy, you know, what is coming at us. And it's worked. Like we have a, a team that is very lean. Like we don't have so many people How compared big is to your the team? size. We're above 50. Okay. It used to be, it used to be so way more. So you're leading 50, 50 No, no, people. this is just, I lead the Facebook team inside this ah, okay. department. Uh, but we have like five or six teams yeah. that operate, uh, most of which are looking at data, by the way. So it's like half of the department would be looking at the data structure and decision making that we do. And then just a part of it is looking at the marketing, actually. Um, yes, and we've seen we've seen the growth and we've actually uh, been able to scale despite having a much leaner team and we know in retrospect that it has paid off for for Zalando so and we know in the future that was the only correct way to potentially structure yourself because we see other companies doing the same so they're actually banking on the same things and i would add to that 
channels are making it easier to automate. Like we work, you know, with the biggest channels and when you're working with Facebook, when you're working with Google, it's increasingly easy to work with their APIs and actually automate most of the marketing work, uh, mostly at scale actually, because we're in an industry that enables this. For all of those out there who are not uh, techies, who are not marketing pros on your level, can you make an example how automated marketing looks like on Facebook? Like, what do you actually automate? Do you have a case? Yeah, sure. I mean, the whole pipeline, basically. But how, <coughs> how it works is there is this wonderful product called Dynamic Ads on Facebook. What is it called? Dynamic Ads. So what you do is you send Facebook a... Uh, an inventory of your products that are available. And being an e-com, we have many items available. So just give that to Facebook um, and tell Facebook who to target. And the, the metrics that we just need to pay attention to is, okay, how much do we invest? Um, and Facebook does most of the work of saying, okay, I will show the customers that you target the items that they prefer. So they will select the items that people would prefer seeing. All of this happening during the auction time. So actually you see always an, an ad that is personalized to your need. And the only thing that is requested on our side is to prepare this feed, having engineers that can send it and regularly update it to Facebook, automate the campaign so that we can bid regularly on it and we don't have manual work to decide how much to invest. Um, yeah, and all of this happens with virtually almost no interaction for all of the European markets. Okay. It's kind of a search operates in a similar way. So if you have search ads, you just tell them what are the keywords that you're bidding on. And once you have a basis that is automated, it takes care of itself. And that's a very similar setup. Mm -hmm. Um, just a quick break for all of those watching out there. Um, Jean de Bressy is a real marketing guru or a social media marketing guru. I mean, he's been, he's at Zalando. He's been at Trivago, so quite a track record. So if you have questions, uh, just hit the chat and uh, let us know what you want to know. <laughs> um, Jean, I have uh, Tarek Müller from About You, who was here earlier, mentioned the increasing challenge of data data availability because of gdpr how are you handling all this right now is that um, something that you're feeling as well the i have to accept button and everything around that um i mean i was i was uh, listening to him and his points are exactly true so uh, gdpr compliance probably did is doing the opposite of what it's aiming at meaning the biggest platforms benefit from it and the smaller actors or small players lose a lot of data just the one part Uh, of course, we do see it. So what is happening is in Berlin, we even have a, the, the case that if you opt out from tracking, you're also opting out from Google Analytics tracking or any type of analytics tracking by default. So uh, we have to not see what is happening for some customers that end up on our premise, which obviously makes the job much harder in marketing. And we're constantly looking for ways to mitigate this while still, I mean, Customer data is one of our main promise at Zalando. We protect customer data and we make sure that we're compliant in every aspect. So uh, we try to deal with the legislation while at the same time, um, so on top of it, adding this customer data protection and then finally making sure that we can still do our job as marketeers. Um, and what we see is that this is a trend that carries on. So next year, there's going to be even less data. We have iOS 14 that was released, but then the release of removing the IDFA numbers starting in January. And we know there's going to be less targeting options for um, iOS campaigns. So we're constantly looking for solutions. It's not easy. I think the entire industry is looking for solutions. Um, so we're talking to other companies, see what kind of mitigations are possible. Uh, but we're definitely not the ones to tell you how to fix this because uh, I think as everyone, we're trying to figure out the solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Um There is one big topic that we have actually not talked about <laughs> already, um, Corona. I know this uh, word pops up in almost every talk today because it's very relevant, because it's really um, tightening up again, the situation. How has um, this affected uh, your your work or the, the marketing sector? Because what from what I see when I talk to companies, the first thing they cut is their marketing budget. So it seems to get a little harder. How, How was it for you this year? Um, so there I would almost, I was thinking about it earlier and I would almost copy paste the answer from Tarek, which is exactly <laughs> the same. What happened is 
uh, demand dropped when Corona started and we're preparing for a very big hit because no one knew what was going to happen. Yeah. So we reduced the investments where we could. Uh, what we saw is same out of home. TV even makes a bit less sense to us because now people are consuming in a different way online and they're moving from the offline world to the online yeah. world. Uh, but then it recovered very fast in e-com. And um, now the situation is so that we have actually, we have increased the guidance for the overall year, the financial guidance of Zalando. And we're lucky enough to be in a situation where there's a lot of demand in the market and we're trying to capture it, uh, meaning that we invest more than before uh, Corona happened right now. What did you in your marketing um, in your marketing team prioritize when you realize that the crisis is hitting? And the marketing team, so yeah, it's there was a mix of things. As a brand, we're moving a lot into social. So we're leaning a lot into social uh, starting this year. It was already a trend that we started last year, but it accelerated so much more due to Corona. So everything on the brand side was shifted uh, upside down. And instead of having long-term out-of-home and TV campaigns, you have influencer-based social media campaigns. So everything... You need to rethink your whole brand strategy for the year. I think that was the most interesting trend happening. Because for performance, you lower budgets, you increase budgets yeah. to try and figure out what to do. But this is, a, this is fairly standard. Yeah. Speaking of influencer marketing, you know, in my timeline, a lot of influencers were suddenly stuck at home and doing other kinds of content. How has that uh, changed your work? And uh, I mean, like, I know you're not... Um, the influencer yeah. guy at Zalando, but uh, you know what your colleagues are doing. Like, how has that uh, changed? So I can't talk so much about how it influenced, so how Corona specifically influenced yeah. it, but I can tell you it's a very big trend for us in the past two to three years. To lean on social means also have a strategy with influencers and be present with the community and understand how you have to talk with influencers to communities. To but is that attract. still attractive when they kind of have a boring life? <laughs> in, in I, I think actually it's even more interesting. Yeah, why? Before. Yeah, it's just because you need to create content that people can relate to. And even if people are at home, you know, I'm at home as well. So if an influencer is at home, they're going to be something that Tarek was mentioning as well. The categories that people shop changed a lot so we see sports and uh, comfort wear being more important and then yeah. an influencer is gonna you know wear these things and show it to you and that's that's exactly the same as what you're doing at home so i think the relationship is there that's true yeah uh, on a personal note uh, what are your favorite social channels where can we catch you do you uh, have any professional uh, yeah, very bad at uh, social media and being there so um i don't have snapchat i don't have tiktok i'm on instagram that probably is the only thing Okay, <laughs> as a professional in the field, but I, feel, I I discovered that actually most of the people I work with are exactly the same. Not yeah. too much into uh, I ask around for Snap, for instance, and nobody seems to know how the platform works because nobody has it. So okay, interesting. And are your bosses on social media, like uh, the CEOs of Zalando? That's actually a good question, and I don't know the answer to it. <laughs> I I don't know. Okay, cool. Thanks so much for being here. I'm I'm taking a look at the clock. Okay, I think um, we don't have any more time for questions. Thanks, uh, Jean uh, de Bressy, for being here today. Um, he is the um, uh, Facebook marketing uh, lead at Zalando. And um, thanks for all your advice. Thank you very much. Thanks for the time.